Hello everyone, my name is Pear, and today we're going to be going over the Aniplex Elite, or the most accurate Anakin Skywalker Episode 3 lightsaber that you can buy. The Aniplex Elite was manufactured by Seven Chambers from Norfolk, England in the UK, and this is the third iteration of the Aniplex. There was the Aniplex, the Aniplex V2, and this third one, the Aniplex Elite. With each version, they just got a little bit more accurate and maybe made a few minor changes here and there. And this one is extremely install friendly. I actually installed this one with a profi board by myself. It was the first lightsaber that I ever installed and it was pretty simple. Currently, these are not available for sale as they are not doing a run right now because they only do a very limited run and once they're done, they're done for now. But I have heard rumors that there will be a fourth run done. After we go over everything, I will go ahead and put a blade in this for you guys. Now let's go ahead and take a look at everything that came with this. So first we obviously have the box, and this was replicated to look like a Graflex camera flash box, which is what the original lightsaber was made from. I'm sure most people in the lightsaber community do know that, but just if you didn't, this is pretty similar to what the box looked like. Now in the side pockets here, we just kind of had a few different parts such as buttons, uh, screws, and tactile switches, and then right here we have the static pummel cap because currently we do have the sound vented uh, pummel cap. And then in the middle, of course, we did get this nice cloth case that had the lightsaber within it. And of course, we got this nice acrylic stand. This specific lightsaber is very special to me for many reasons. As mentioned before, this was the first lightsaber that I installed by myself. So I did install all of the electronics as well as program the profi board to make it do what I wanted it to do. And I went ahead and put a lot of Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader fonts, as well as some Luke Skywalker ones too. Another reason this specific hilt is very special to me is because back in 2005, the first lightsaber that my dad ever got for me after Revenge of the Sith came out was an Anakin Skywalker lightsaber. It was a Master Replicas FX version, and unfortunately I do not have it anymore. I wish I did, but it is still a hilt that it holds a very special place in my heart. Now, unfortunately, due to the material that this lightsaber is made of, which is a chrome-plated brass, it has a high tendency to have quite a bit of fingerprints on it. But I'm okay with it because I'm not going to be selling it or anything, and it's mostly on display. Right here, I just kind of wanted to show off the control box. I love how good that looks. I love how detailed it is, and it has that nice etched pattern in it, as well as the little gold side switch. Now, unfortunately for practicality's sake, this control box is static, as in it does not move, it is not a button of any sort. I know technically, I believe canonically, uh, the control box is the power switch for Anakin's lightsaber, but I believe when it comes to Luke Skywalker's lightsaber, which obviously they are the same hilt in canon, but, you know, they look different in the real world, I believe Luke Skywalker's is one of these two buttons. And these two buttons are the buttons that I actually use to power this one because I have a two button setup on my profi board. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this lightsaber in its entirety from bottom to top. So here we have the grips. These were installed for me whenever I bought the lightsaber. I know if you buy the older versions of the Aniflex, these do have to come off and you have to install them yourself. These are accurately placed as you can see this uh, gap right here lines up perfectly with the control box. You can see my Revenge of the Sith poster in the back. And then opposite the control box, we have the Covertech wheel, which is accurately placed. Now, moving up from the grips, we already did go over that control box, very beautiful piece, but something else on this section is the clamp. Instead of a uh, Graflex clamp, obviously, it is this knurled pattern, and this actually took a lot of inspiration from the Ranch Saber, which is the one Graflex that is still around from the original trilogy that they still kind of dressed up, and it has like this knurled pattern tape on it. Such a beautiful design. Very well created, to, or replicated from this one too. And moving up, we have what most people refer to as the Copper Eye, which on certain Graflexes, this might be another red button, or it'll be a glass eye. On this one, it is obviously this copper eye, and we get a good look in there. That copper eye was hand-painted, and then we have the brass pins next to it. Those were honestly probably the hardest part of the install, just because they're super tiny, and they are super annoying to screw in there. 
Now if we go ahead and flip it around, on most Graflexes this would be called the Red Eye, but obviously it is um, another copper color similar to the Copper Eye, and it's just such a beautiful color. This one was also hand-painted. And then right above that we have the Bunny Ears, which are another, you know, obvious tell that this is a Graflex type lightsaber. This one has a much more rounded uh, shape to the uh, bunny ears, but with that little step pattern on the bottom and top of it. And then going towards the very top, we also have the blade plug. This one sits just a little bit higher than it should. It should go a little bit further down, but I do have the NeoPixel connectors in there, so it does sit just a little bit higher, but still perfectly flat whenever looking at it from the front. And I think now we could probably go ahead and pop a blade in this thing and show you what kind of fonts I have on it. So I went ahead and opened it up for you guys. You can go ahead and screw the entire bottom half off to reveal the chassis. Definitely not the prettiest install. You know, you can see some of the wires in there, but I kind of like the way it looks. And then there's obviously the profi board right there. And we have the kill key in there. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that for you guys so you can hear it turn on. And to get the blade in there, it is a little bit of a process. You have to take off the smaller red or copper eye, and then you can unscrew that top uh, little grub screw right there, and it loosens the blade plug. And once that is loosened, we can just go ahead and pull the blade plug right out. And I will go ahead and pop a blade in for you guys now. And I did just want to point out that because this lightsaber has such a thin design, which I think is very, very nice and very of the prequels, it does have a th slightly thinner blade. This one takes a 7 8 inch blade, whereas most take a 1 inch blade. So we're going to go ahead and go over all the sound fonts I have installed on this. Uh, the first one here is going to be Anakin Skywalker from Episode 3, whenever he is on the light side, so towards the beginning of the movie. And the blaster block, lightning block, of course, you know, tip drag, it has, you know, color change and everything, but this one, like I said, is Anakin towards the beginning, so his quotes on here are going to be whenever he's on the light side. I shouldn't have done that, it's not the Jedi way. You owe me one, and I'm saving your skin for the tenth time. And the next we're going to be going to when Anakin has turned to the dark side, so... Darth Vader. And it has like a deeper ignition and deeper hum. And this one has quotes from whenever he has turned. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. I pledge myself to your teachings. Next up is going to be the Order 66, or as most people refer to it as, the Youngling Slayer font. Execute Order 66. And this one has a prion from the iconic scene, which everyone, of course, knows. Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? And then, pretty dark, but we do have the, you know, the slaying of the younglings. <laughs> And next up is going to be Anakin versus Obi Wan. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. I will do what I must. And this one also has a pre on. You will try. And it has quotes you from the You underestimate my power. Don't try it. And I believe this one for the music has a uh, battle of the heroes. I'm not going to play this too long because I don't want to get my video taken down by Disney or something. And then next up, I believe, is going to go through Darth Vader uh, chronologically, so this next one is going to be Rogue One Vader. And I have one of my favorite like sound fonts whenever you uh, turn the music on for this one. So this is going to be the hallway scene from Rogue One. Next up is going to be uh, A New Hope. Again, has that really nice slow red ignition. Different blaster blocks. And this one should have, obviously, quotes from A New Hope. This will be a day long remembered. It has seen the end of Kenobi. It will soon see the end of the Rebellion. And next up will obviously be Empire Strikes Back. You are not as strong as in thought. What is thy bidding, 
And next up is going to be, obviously, you know, after Empire Strikes Back, is going to be Return of the Jedi, which is my personal favorite Star Wars movie. I'm aware that it's not the best one, but it is my favorite. Obi-Wan has taught you well. And next up is going to be Luke Skywalker, since obviously, like I said, I know this isn't technically the same hilt that was used in the movie, but canonically it is uh, Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber that Luke gets. And uh, the quote that I have for this one, for the A New Hope one, is one that I know a lot of people hate, and I know especially Mark Hamill hates it, but my friends and I love it because we just think it's funny. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters! Good one. And this one has a more scion blade because in A New Hope it is just more of like a lighter color. Nice and bright. This is actually really bright, especially in this dark room. I need Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. And next up is obviously going to be Empire Strikes Back, which is the last time that we see this lightsaber because the sequels never happened. Obviously joking, I'm just not a huge fan of them. The Force is with you, young Skywalker. You are not a Jedi yet. And this one has a really cool ignition. It has like a uh, a white to blue, like it shoots up white and turns blue. Huge fan of that. Let's watch that one more time. And then if we switch back, we have a uh, uh, it circles back to Anakin Skywalker. This is where the fun begins. <laughs> And that'll do it for the fonts. Now, if you stuck around to the end of this video, I just want to say that I appreciate it, but I also have a little bonus for you guys. Last week, I had the incredible opportunity to meet Hayden Christensen or Anakin Skywalker, and I had this custom plaque signed specifically for this lightsaber. I also wanted to mention that Hayden Christensen himself has held this lightsaber because for our photo op, I had him hold it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of my Anakin Skywalker Episode 3 lightsaber. I have plenty more nerd stuff to show off for you guys. This is actually my first video on this channel, and if you want to go ahead and give me a sub, I'm going to be going over everything I have. And if you guys have any feedback for me on this and want me to do something different, feel please feel free to let me know. I hope you guys have a great day and stick around to see more of my collection.